Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today this is a voice recording to make a, a trail extrusion animation within geometry nodes. Uh, because we are going to use the extrude node in 3.1, so unlike other tutorials, although I record in 3.1, but technically speaking you can do it in 3.0, this particular recording you have to do this in 3.1. And uh, as always, I'm going to use the presets so you, you can download them for free from the link in the description. So let's start. So here we in Blender, let's go to nodings, create uh, a object. Uh, let's get a grid. But uh, I don't think a, a procedural grid makes difference. And I need to create a curve. I'm going to draw my own curve like an S shape as a path. I think this will just be fine and I can enlarge this grid. Okay. And then I'm going to take this curve uh, using the object info. So let's join geometry because I want to see both curve and uh, my plane. So let's uh, link the geometry and I'm going to bevel curve. Uh, actually in this particular case probably using bevel curve is not really necessary because I'm not going to make the cube shape I need to actually have a curve line so let's use the curve linear uh, this curve linear so if I disable the grid so this is how it looks like so we can see the grid and this path is overlapping to each other I hope uh, there won't be any Z fighting, but this is kind of an important step. So let's disable this grid so we can see the subdivision of our curve at this moment. Okay. So this is actually very important because we're going to extrude them. So let's take a resample curve so that it's, it's more uniform. And uh, I think we can take the yes. Okay. Because we aren't using all these kind of settings since we're using the custom bevel, so you can just uh, control H to crush them. So basically, this is already a curve to mesh. Actually, this is really just a curve to mesh if you're doing so. But we have a kind of radius control if you want which I think it's very helpful but that's another story you can deal with that's using this value as well okay. anyway right now we're generating the path and I need the object to move on the top of it so let's take a point distribute uh, no, point instance. And I probably just instance something horizontal, I think. So let's take a, I think it's just a curve linear. So this is the curve linear, which is this uh, line. So use the step mode to decrease the step size. And uh, let's Let's instance the geometry. So this is the path that we're getting right now. Okay. So let's turn down these values. And if we add a follow spline, then we're generating points for them to actually move. And by changing the parameter, they are moving. So let's point the instance some cube or no. Let's take an ICO sphere or UV sphere will be fine. Take the UV sphere. This is too large, so let's plug the scale into the place and decrease the scale amount. The reason I mainly do that is I have some control over the scale size and the variance. But you do not really see a variance size. This is because we didn't realize the instance. So the endpoints that we generated are probably our instances. So they are identical to each other. So you can you can realize 
from any stage, but I think I will realize, yes. I think the variance is too much, so maybe 0 0.15. A little bit of variance should be enough. I think this is just that you can decide by yourself. So, okay. Also to know that uh, this is start variance and this is speed variance. So that they start from the different position and by using the parameter they are having the different speeds if you turn this speed variance. Some of them they will be slower, some of them will be faster. So this is our parameter that you can potentially play around. So now we have all this kind of sphere. We need to deal with the... I'm going to turn off this uh, start and the speed variance because I also would like to make sure about the trailing effect later. So let's use the join geometry. So here you need to understand the difference between these two. I think I'm going to use the same curve linear for the extrusion. Uh, actually, it's not working. I think the reason is because of this radius. Yes. So now we can actually see This is kind of okay. Hmm. So by using the same curve linear, you can see there is a synchronization between the ball that we instanced and the line or the path. Okay. Uh, this will be very helpful later if we are trying to extrude the face. But uh, there is also an issue that you realize the ball is actually running on these edges, not the face. So we cannot really extrude the face very well as the effect of trading. So we need to do some changes. Uh, I guess, what about, uh, let's increase the count as 12. And it does not really help. Okay. But uh, maybe it will be helpful if we convert all these kind of points into the face. And there is actually a node to do that function, which is called a dual mesh. And immediately we have this effect. And this is very nice. Ha 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 ha. Everything has been solved. But you do realize these two values of these two curve linear should be synchronized. So let's uh, give a group input to make this entire process a little bit more procedural. <clears throat> you can also determine the count so that uh, you have all these kind of sphere to instance, but this is another story. I think I will just keep the current, the current setting and move on to the next step. Okay. So just knowing that uh, right now we're using these parameters to move this sphere. And definitely there are some issue with the past generation in general, but there is nothing I can really do. It's just uh, how we have done with the curves. So. This probably also tells us that uh, the path should not be too tortuous. I do not know how to pronounce that, but anyway. Okay. So this is our current status. Okay. So let's move on to the path. Uh, talking about the extrusion, because we're trying to extrude based on the trail. So we actually need to drive based on the parameters on this splice. Okay. So this is very similar to our previous uh, trail deformation on the knot. That we're trying to use the curve parameter to deform a, to uh, a donut. In this case, we're just uh, try to switch the deformation into the extrusion. But it, theoretically speaking, they're the same. So here we need uh, to have the parameter to be transferred. So you just uh, transfer the parameter. Let's uh, use the nearest. So it's called the spline parameter right now in 3.1. And then we we need to actually extrude extrude the mesh node. And I think I'm going to control the amount and the selection, both of them. And we encountered the same issue as the last time. That it says we 
need to be a mesh instead of uh, a curve so we need to take a curve to mesh but uh, as soon as we use the curve to mesh we also lose the spawn parameter because it's a mesh so we need to capture it this definitely sounds to be very dumb but we have to do these steps and plug the attributes so right now we can see this extrusion effect on every faces which is kind of nice okay. uh, and I think I'm going to transfer based on the face mm, seems not really working so we can still use the points okay so this is the current result but we are not animating it so we need to do a little bit of math with this kind of parameter I think you can do that before and after the transfer, so it does not really matter. Let's do a mass and we can add the fraction. Uh, no, probably not add the fraction because we are not looping this spline. So just uh, have that and we can potentially clamp it. So we can see this effect right now. Here, knowing that we are trying to look for a flowing of extrusion effect instead of uh, it just reaches the maximum. Okay. So we need to do a map range, or actually a color ramp, so that's a white in the middle and a black in two ends. Okay. So this is how it should look like. And you can actually see this animating effect. So right now, knowing that so we're trying to decrease in the value, so in for that to move forward, or actually closer to our, us. So this direction is uh, opposite to the follow spawn parameter. Okay. So we need to take a negative, so that one is using the negative value, the other is using the positive value. And taking these negatives, and we can finally actually see this come up effect. Okay, uh, we need to offset a little bit so that we can try to subtract a value, I think. Uh, so let's see the effect again. So we, so this is we subtract or we actually add one. This is the training effect that we see. But obviously, you can try to crush these numbers. Uh, you can always modify this color ramp so that they look kind of different. So for example, I can crush it like this. So that's less, the trail distance will be shorter. And you just play around with these values. And you can see this effect. And the rest are just all this kind of parameter. So whenever you're working with color ramp or float curve, most but most of case by default you're working in the range of zero to one. So you have to use the clamp in this case. Uh, if you would like to change the mag magnitude, you can use a color or a map range at the end so that you can decrease the amount of deformation. Okay. Uh, in terms of extrusion, there is uh, also a thing that you can potentially play around is previously we've mentioned about the resampling actually we should use the resampling for both instances and uh, finally the bevel okay. so we just increase the amount of counts then you have the counts if we increase the amount of counts uh, yeah These are mostly procedural, so you just uh, try to deal with these uh, differences. I do not know how to organize the knowledge in this case, but I guess if you follow this recording, you should be able to know about the relationship between two curvilinear and the so on and so forth. 
So we can actually use the count and we'll take a math node to multiply it, uh, to add the two so that it, uh, it becomes completely procedural. Okay. Uh, also, it can, you can change the way of instancing. But uh, I'm not sure how you're gonna change that exactly. It's just uh, a, this is just an example. Okay. So finally, we enable the most initial grid and we can see this trailing and the boss. Okay. Knowing that this entire animation is driven by this origin. Okay. Uh, this also means that it's possible that you add a variance. I actually add a motion variance. And here we need to deal with this custom ID. Otherwise, every point is is having a different values from this random value inside. Uh, so here, let's just take an attribute spline, which is essentially capturing the index in spline domain. So now we have this result, and by playing these parameters, you can see this trading effect. So there are lots of things that you can potentially play around. But uh, whatever I showed to you is just an example. Actually, right now this looks much more interesting. Okay. So I wouldn't say this is yet. So I hope you enjoy this recording. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.